Welcome to another episode of Real BMX Racing, the podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by 110% Nutrition, Wrenchman Wheel Builds, and Recycles Bike Shop. Today we have the honor of speaking with one of USA BMX's top women pros in the game. Her name is Lexis Colby. Welcome. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. <laughs> How you doing? Good. How are you guys? Good. We're good. Good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought for some reason to be able to log you in, but there's some issues with the Apple. Yeah. It's not making it easy. Yeah. It said my browser wasn't updated, but I kept trying to do it. it just wouldn't let me join. But okay. So okay. So we're just gonna ask you a bunch of questions. Um, first thing I wanted to know is uh, you're racing your first national this year at Houston. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, how do you feel about that track? Um, I like it. I think it's a little bit technical, but and it's pretty windy there. But I think it'll be a good weekend. I know a lot of people are going out there, so it'll make for some good racing. Okay. Um, how do you feel about your 2022 uh, season? It was fun. I got to do a lot more international races last year, and it put me more kind of on that scene. And I really enjoyed it, um, not just the racing, but also seeing a lot of the world. Um, and I hope to continue that in 2023. Does racing international tracks make you better when you come back to the United States? I think so, just because of the how technical the overseas tracks are. Um, mm -hmm. I think U.S. could use some more technical tracks like that, um, but... Yeah, I wish I could ride those tracks a lot more than I do. How do you feel the um, – obviously, the competition seems a little bit harder with those tracks over there. What's your favorite track that you like so far racing outside of the U.S.? Um, I've only – I only went to France and Colombia last year. Um, I'd have to say I like the France track, even though they just built it up for the world's. Um, okay. Columbia was fun. It was long. It was hard in that high elevation, and that first jump kind of just sends you anywhere. But wow. um, yeah, I liked the Paris track or the Nantes track. When you race, what is your favorite gate to be in? What does it depend on the track? I mean, you always want to go one if that's the option, but okay. um. I kind of like three or four just because it sets you up right for the middle of the turn and you can go inside if you'd like. Do you watch the light or listen for the sound of the beat? Both, but I mainly use the light. Okay. Is that something that you've always done or is it something that you have to train to do? Yeah, I've always done the light. I feel like it's a little bit easier watching it. Really? I have a difficult time keeping my head up. I'm like, oh. gotta, I'm, like, I'm like, look down, find your balance. I'm somewhere in the middle of not falling. We are good. Yeah, I've been trying to stand a lot taller in the gate, actually. But, um, yeah, I listen to it because I like do like a breathing routine to it. Make sure oh, I can, nice. like, snap out of the gate. But, yeah, light for sure. That, that was one of my questions also. What is your process as you're entering into the gate? Like as far as the breathing, as far as like your thoughts, like what, how do you set yourself up? Yeah, so I always have my right foot clipped in before I go in the gate. And then okay. um, just clip in, get the crank set up. Uh, and then I usually like before the race, I'll roll my hands for my gloves to be like super tight. And then, yeah, I just get into my stance and then I do like a breathing routine, if you will call that what it is. But um just so I, like, hold my breath until the light goes. <laughs> and do you hit jumps with the same foot that you start with? Yeah. Like, forward? Yeah. Do you? Okay. Right foot forward on everything. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Okay, I was going to say, do, um, when you come to jumping, what was your, your method into, like, learning how to jump? Like, you know, before you, you obviously... Everyone always says you start with the tabletop right? because it's so, it's so much easier. But, like, what's your thought process when you're trying to tackle the jump, I guess? Um, like, the whole learning it from 
the start? From scratch. Okay. Yep. Um, I obviously started, everyone starts on the tabletops, right? But I actually had like a lot of dirt jumps in my backyard growing up and Bubba Harris would come help me build them. And they were super small at, f- at first, obviously, but I feel like those really shape you into learning how to jump a jump for sure, whether it's gaps or not, but those lips and steep landings definitely help. Nice. So how long have you been riding? Since I was five. Ooh. Yep. Long time. Why be, so at five, why BMX? Like, how'd that come about? Uh, my dad raced motocross, and that's always what I wanted to do originally. So he took me out to the BMX track first to learn, like, the bike skill and everything. And then I just fell in love with BMX. I did try dirt bikes a little bit, but it landed on top of me and I was done. <laughs> yeah, I probably would have been the same way for me too. Yeah. Do you um train differently for nationals than you do for grands? Um I feel like you always train throughout the year. I think the only difference is off season because you are able to do a lot more. Um but I also feel like we adjust training if we're gonna be on like small hill or supercross anything like that, but I feel like the only real change is definitely off-season. It's a lot more work. Okay, okay. Do you have, like, a, um, I guess I want to say a nutrition schedule you stay to? Or Yeah, for the most part, I try to eat as clean as I can, but I just try and eat as much as I can to gain weight. Um, I'm pretty small in the class, so just trying to bulk up, I guess. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Do you feel that's a disadvantage of being smaller than the girls you race? Um, sometimes I feel like I get pulled on the first jump, especially. Um, I think weight on Supercross definitely helps, but not a total factor in it, I guess. But okay. definitely could help. What's your um? What's your crank length, if you don't mind me asking? It's one seven two. 72? Yeah. How tall are you? 5'2". Okay. That's kind, of, that's kind of big. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's It works. What kind of bike do you ride? I ride a Rift. Okay, and what size bike do you ride? Pro XL, or I think a Pro, possibly. Okay, okay. And who are your current sponsors? Gordy's, Tangent, Fly, and E6 Components. Nice. Who um who was your first sponsor? Gordy's. Gordy's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were my first team ever. Um, I've known them for so long, basically since the day I started riding. So they're just like family. Okay. Okay. What's so? What's your favorite track? Um, like ever or in Arizona. In okay, give me your favorite track in Arizona, and then give me your favorite track in the U.S. Um. I guess Goodyear, just because I spend most of my time out there. Um, And then in the U.S., I think I'd have to say Nashville's pretty fun. And I really like the new Tulsa track. Okay, okay. You're the first one that I didn't mention Rock Hill. Everyone else has been leaning on Rock Hill like, oh, there it goes. I love. I do like like, Rock Hill. (laughs) <laughs> but I feel like if I'm going to pick a Supercross, it's going to be a gap jump for sure. Okay. Um, racing with other pros, have you been starstruck by anybody that's been in the game with you? Like as a role model or anything? Yeah. Like you look over and you're just like, oh my God, there she is. <laughs> or you're just like, the business as usual. Honestly, like, I'm not, I'm I, think, I think a lot of the older girls in the class, it was kind of like that for me going into the pro class. Um, just because there is that huge age difference because I've watched them growing up. Um, so yeah, I'd honestly say like all of them, (laughs) it's kind of crazy. And like, I think I'm just now starting to realize that I'm like racing them, you know, but, um, yeah, I'd have to say, Oh, I don't know. I can't just name one. Definitely, definitely <laughs> like Felicia and Elise, obviously, like just being around them more. Um, right. It's kind of crazy because I've watched them growing up so much. 
So it's, so it's like one of those things where they speak, you just like listen and soaking it all yeah, in. Yeah, of course. hundred percent. Do you feel safer riding against them opposed to riding against like the experts? Like extra expert boys? No, just expert girls. And because just the fact that they're so aggressive when they ride and it just seems like they'll try things that maybe the pros might not try. Just Oh, like just, as in the pro-ams and stuff? Um, yeah. Honestly, I don't mind too much because obviously that was me like two years ago. And I still mm. kind of have that like drive for it. Um, okay. But... Yeah, I mean, I think it's fun racing pros as an amateur just because you're racing the pros and you want to see how good you can do, um, which it's racing. So, no, I don't think I'd be bothered by it. So, in this sport, accidents happen all the time. What was your biggest accident and how did you come back from that physically and mentally? Um... If like, you haven't had I one have yet, like then two we'll just... injuries that were like pretty bad. I think this one was my worst. So I crashed in Albuquerque um, junior year and I lacerated my spleen, kidney, fractured my L2, wow. bruised my pancreas and punctured a lung. So I had to spend mm. like four or five days in the ICU there. Um, and it sucked mm. because I had like no bruises or scratches. It was all internally. So I didn't look hurt, and I think that's right. what was kind of playing with me is, like, oh, I have to take so long off the bike, even though I look physically fine. Um, right. But I've had many injuries. I feel like being off the bike just makes you more motivated to come back stronger than ever. Okay. So it's easy. To, so you're saying it was pretty easy for you to come back mentally to – want to tackle another, um, I guess, obstacle as far as jumping or whatever yes. caused your wreck? Yes, and no. I mean, obviously, when you get back on the bike and start doing everything that you were doing, it can be a little scary. Like, for example, I broke my thumb in Tulsa last year, and two weeks after I got my cast off was the World's Training Camp there, and I had to hit the hill two weeks after I got my cast off. And I was mm -hmm. nervous for sure. But you just kind of have to block it out of your mind and trust your skills and just know that you can do it. I mean, was there ever a time that you just wanted to quit because it's just. Um, no, I've never thought about <laughs> quitting. I love this sport awesome. and it makes me like happy. It. So love right. it. Cool. Or do you still get uh, nervous and butterflies in the gate? Sometimes. I feel like on Supercross it happens more um, just because you have to get over that first jump. But, yeah, I think more in the pro class I do just because more is on the line. Have you ever raced cruiser? I have when I was super young, but I stopped it like a couple years in. And why is that? Um, just like yeah, I just wanted to focus on class, but it was fun. Um, more racing, you know, I used to do open cruiser and class, but yeah. yeah, it was awesome. But things come to an end. <laughs> nice. Do you, do you play with your gearing at all? Um, sometimes I have been a little bit more recently because um, I've been doing a lot more gym work. So I think I'm going up a little bit in gear right now okay. but i haven't for a while i guess that just means you're getting faster yeah hopefully <laughs> <laughs> are now, are, in your class are you guys allowed to ride the os20 the what the os20 os20 i don't know what that is you don't know what an os20 frame is oh no i don't <laughs> <laughs> wow okay okay so shannon can you, you want to explain what os20 okay. frame is well, OS20 is an oversized 20-inch bike oh. that some of the older guys ride. So it's kind of in between a 20-inch and a cruiser. Oh, gosh. But USA BMX allows them to race in 20-inch class. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure so, about that one. I don't know. Okay. Possibly. Okay. <laughs> if you were just big, I don't know. Could slide by. I guess you're not as popular <laughs> as I thought you were then. Right. Because I, I was just kind of wondering, like, I'm, I know the – I think I learned the other day that men can race them in the pro, in the pro class, so I wouldn't trip the women. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. Possibly. I never knew that. So it, 
recently they um changed the rules as far as practices on national days. You know, they used to have practices on Saturdays, so you could pop up on a Saturday, get practice in, yeah. and then and then race. But there's some guys that still can't get to a national until a Saturday. Like, how do you? And then they can't practice. How do you approach a race yeah. if you can't practice? I I'm not sure about that one. I know they did do away with the Saturday practices, um, but I think every race is a three day race now. Um, yeah. So yeah, it does take out like a whole weekend, but oh, that's a tough one. Because have you ever raced? What have you ever raced without practicing? Um, well, we got like a thirty minute warm up in Vegas, but we got there like the night prior, so kind of. But we got also okay. got a warm up. But I guess yeah, yeah. Just try your best first round, and if not, you got second round. There you go. Are you in college? No, I'm not currently in college. Um, so your full, full full throttle BMX? Yeah, I do have a part time job, but I barely I get any time off I need. So very thankful for that. Um, okay. But yeah, mainly just training. Okay. What was your favorite subject in high school? Um, probably everything around exercise science easy i loved learning about the body um <laughs> obviously because i'm an athlete so i feel like i just gravitated towards that and it just comes naturally i guess once you get on top of that very true okay how did so you, how did you choose the number you raced with um so actually it's 256 so 25 was my dad's motocross race number and then 56 okay. was his best friend's number that passed away Okay. Yeah. So it's nice. like combined. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, okay. So has your dad ever been on? So has your dad ever given a shot to ride on uh, BMX? Yeah. He started riding when I was young, but as soon as I started beating him, he quit. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you, did you beat him yeah. right away? Or did you have to no, he rode with me for a while, um, like right when I started. But yeah, mm -hmm. about when I was like... I think nine or ten, I started beating him out of the game. He was not happy, so he stopped. <laughs> that sounds like us. That sounds like, yeah, I know I probably look at my kid and be like, yeah. all right, that's enough. That's he enough. rides a lot of so, mountain bikes now, and he still, like, oh. tries to race me when I'm doing sprints, and he just uses his gears to beat me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What well, um so when you're not racing and you're not practicing, what do you do in your downtime? Um, usually hang out with friends. Um, I have my twin sister too. We always do end up doing something. Um, either going out get, to get food or just hanging around, chilling. Had she ever raced? My sister. Um, yeah. she's tried it. Um, when we first started, she probably did it for like a couple months and then stopped. But she did, like, gymnastics, soccer, but now she's just in college. Got you. Okay. Um, one of the things I was going to ask you is when it comes to, like, your diet, because you say you're pretty much all over the place with it, do you change it up towards the weekend of nationals? Like, you know what I mean? Like, do you carve up since you are, you know, you're big on, I guess, carving up because you are yeah. exercise? Do you carve up more? Into yeah, I love having like a big bowl of pasta on race weekends. Always go to Olive Garden. It's like a must. Um, and then I, I don't have ice cream and I have a really big sweet tooth. So I just I try to lay it off on the weekend. <laughs> okay. Okay. You find it hard keeping the weight on being so active? Yeah, I think with my like body type and metabolism, um, I fluctuate a lot. And it's gotten me a while to get up to the weight I am today, like a couple years. Um, but yeah, definitely being active is a downfall too. What's your um, favorite movie? Movie? Oh, that's a tough one. Just picking one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, I guess any movie that comes on where you just like, you know, it's on and, you know, you can just sit down and be like, I'm watching this one. I really liked the Top Gun Maverick movie. 
I've seen that like at least 10 times since it's come out. Every plane ride <laughs> just in my movie for sure. Okay. Okay. Do you watch scary movies? Uh, sometimes, but not on my free will. <laughs> <laughs> I will have nightmares okay. for sure. <laughs> If there was one rule in the US BMX that you could change, what would it be? Hmm. Oh, I don't know. Mm. Oh, that's a tough one. I guess the only rule that I've ever re- wanted to change was when I was 16 and everyone in my class was trying to go pro. Um, and then they made that junior class but now i think it's back at 16 so i guess the rule that i want to change has already been changed (laughs) okay what's the um what's the weirdest place you've been recognized um at a soccer tournament yeah (laughs) nice was um was it like a big thing or was it just more like a high school you ran a game. Yeah, it was my sister's game, and um, I think one of the brothers came up to me, but it was super cool. It wasn't weird, but I don't think I've had, like, a weird <laughs> encounter. <laughs> I was going to say, did you ask for your autograph? No, um, I think we might have gotten a picture. I'm not sure. I can't remember. Okay. Okay, because I had some people, they're like, oh, yeah, you asked for your autograph, and that's when everybody turns around and looks like, what is that person? Yeah, anytime I'm getting an <laughs> autograph has been at the track or something, so not too weird. <laughs> okay. What was your first BMX frame? Um, I believe it was a red line. Yep. Red line mini. Nice. Did you still have it? Uh I don't think so. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that was a while ago. Okay. Uh Shannon? So when riders get to the point where they turn expert, that's when things get tough. That's when a lot of riders quit. It seems yeah. like to me. Um, what can you give some riders that are right there, like some advice for the expert class? Like, well, yeah, because they just got in the expert class. They're not winning anymore. They're coming in dead last. It seems like. You get into that class, you seem like you don't even have a chance against some of these guys that are so fast. Right. The more you ride with those people, though, automatically the faster you're going to get. So even if it takes, I mean, a couple months to a couple years, um, if you keep working at it, it will pay off. Um, And if you really want to make it in the sport, I mean riding in the expert class and getting better and better until you reach pro if that's the end goal um i mean everyone's all over the place in pro uh so i guess just keep going at it and just keep getting the positives away and yeah good thank you what was your um most difficult track um here in america hmm. Probably, um, I'd have to say Houston or Tulsa is pretty technical, just to get the feel for. Um, but yeah, not that they're bad tracks, but they're just technical. Right. That, that Tulsa track looks yeah, tough. looks big. Yeah. I didn't get a chance to ride it, but it looks Yeah, up. it's it's fun though. I mean it's long. Um, but yeah, definitely deep jumps, so I think it was the rhythm section that had like twenty rows yeah. in the in the section. <laughs> yeah, doing a full lap, you're just like, ah, oh, I got one more straight to go. <laughs> okay, okay. When it's all said and done and you're trying to hang it up, what do you want to be remembered by or remembered for in the sport? Um, mainly just a role model in the sport, obviously. Um, showing, I don't know, hopefully a good BMXer. Um, and yeah, basically that's all a role model. And giving back to the sport is what I want to do when I'm done with it. And yeah, helping to shape it to be where it's at.
Awesome. Awesome. Can we plug in a few brands and talk about your bike and some of the parts you're running? Yeah, but I'm very bad with my parts. <laughs> so I'm just going to ask you like, uh, like the main parts as far as like hubs, what type of hubs? I do run, run you know? Onyx. Onyx hubs. Which ones? I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and what about forks? What type of forks? I do just you run? switched to the tangent carbon ones and I've been loving them. They're awesome. I didn't even know about those. Wow. <laughs> hey, I was gonna say, I didn't yeah, know they just that. came out. Um, their launch was at Grands, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah. Oh, wow. I did not know that. And what about Cranks? Cranks, I'm running Avian right now. Okay. And what size bars do you run? Let me ask you that. I'm pretty sure sevens. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sounds about right. Oh, yeah, you're five, too. Yeah. So, yeah. I like that. <laughs> All it in that, so cool. All right, yeah, that was it on that. Are you um? And, and this is one of the things that I think it's so cool and so weird at the same time. Are you one of those people that can actually jump and pedal in the air? Um, I have done that. Um, I probably cannot do it on a big jump, but a little one probably. I haven't done it in a long time though. <laughs> is it is it beneficial to it, or like is it just something you just up and you're just like? Yeah, I mean. Keep it going? <laughs> I, it's beneficial if you land on your pedals for sure, but like straight up in the air, I don't know. I, I don't think there's anything <laughs> going from that. Okay, okay. D- disc brakes or rim brakes? I do run disc brakes. Um, the manual ones are fine. The hydraulic ones, I could go without. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard Too that complicated. Okay. Do you work on your own no, bike? No, Gordy's does. <laughs> okay. Cool. Do you um do you usually bring one or two bikes with you to the national? I bring one. Yeah. Okay. And you said um so you listed all your sponsors. Is there anybody that you would like to add to that, or any company you would like to add to that? No, that's all my sponsors. Do you wear protective gear? I do. When you ride, I wear G form elbow pads and knee pads. Okay, I saw a few pictures. It just didn't look like you had any pads. Maybe it was just for the picture. yeah. Sometimes know. in That's practice, it. I don't put them on, but racing always. And do you always wear gloves? Yeah, I cannot okay. do it barehanded. No way. <laughs> when you I, pra- said- I was gonna say, when you practice, are you going one hundred percent? Yeah. Yes my efforts and everything yeah so if i'm doing like a crazy jump of course i'm gonna put the pads on <laughs> if i'm doing full laps yeah okay what what makes a good team like how would you select a team or what is is a team going to approach you with that's going to make you want to join their team um i really like um family type style teams i think it just makes for a better environment um and if the team manager is cool, then all is good in the world. Um, but honestly, just a good brand, good, good people on the team, nothing too crazy. Okay. If, is or was your dad a factory dad? Yes, <laughs> he was a factory dad <laughs> very much. But <laughs> he hasn't really come around BMX too much recently, but he was. A hundred percent. Nice. What, one of the first people you mentioned was Bubba Harris. How do you know um, him? I trained with him a lot during my amateur years. Uh, I'd like to say that I learned a lot of my skill from him, for sure. Okay, cool. I bet got to learn some skill from him. All right. Who's your favorite men's pro of all time? Probably Bubba Harris. <laughs> He's like a brother to me, honestly. But. Okay. Do you wish that in time there might be a women's vet pro class? Yeah, actually, me and my, like, my aged girls uh, were talking about we could have a class if all of us turned vet after the pro women's <laughs> class. <laughs> so maybe, maybe it'll come. Who knows? That would, that would be cool. <laughs> yeah. Right? Probably looking at some of the old riders like, come on, my red, <laughs> just build them a class, you know? But, um... What's the um 
you still have to, what's your, your biggest accomplishment so far as far as your wins go? Where you just like, when you won it, you knew like, this was it. This was my moment. Um, I was really happy with the B main win at Grands just because I crashed in the semi and I was super bummed. Um, wanted to be in that A main, but it was it was cool that I turned it around for a B main win. So that was awesome. And probably Nag Five Challenge. That was that was my best win. That was awesome. Yeah, that's a hard <laughs> class. That's that's a hard race to win, yeah. definitely. So what do you do in the downtime when you're at Grands? At Grands. Because um, I know it's like an all-day thing. It kind of got you guys racing a little bit earlier, but there's still got to be some sort of gaps for you guys to be like, oh. Yeah, God. so last year, I think I got in on a Tuesday, and we practiced Wednesday. Um, just show up, practice, and then I usually chill at the hotel or see some of my friends, go out to eat. Um, and then I think Thursday and Friday – we were racing early in the morning. Thursday, obviously, got some Thanksgiving dinner. I think I had, like, two of them. And nice. um, <laughs> Friday, we race in the morning, and then we have that break. So we usually all go back to the hotel and chill until we have the night show. And then I think I was flying out by Saturday. <laughs> okay, nice. For any nationals or grants, have you ever stayed in an Airbnb? Um. I have, yes, one. So Air, Airbnb versus hotel, which one Definitely would you Definitely an Airbnb if you can work it out. I feel like you need a little bit more people to stay in an Airbnb, but 100%. Gotcha. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you were at Grands, because I know that you what the uh, – I didn't get to go this year. Uh, Shannon was there this year. So at the, the pro signing tables, you guys were all mm -hmm. over there, right? When you're doing the pro signing table, has have you ever like just looked over it and you saw all these people there and, and you just got overwhelmed with it? Like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm on this side of the table when a couple of years earlier, yeah. you know, you were in yeah, the Yeah, I line. think my first year pro, I was like super excited to do all of those things. Um, just because, I mean, it's your chance to be included in all of that stuff. So it's definitely cool. Um, but yeah, I think I felt like that my uh first year as pro do you train with other pros yeah um like last year we had a lot of camps at the tulsa track um and it was super fun riding with all the girls um i don't have too many girls to ride with out here um so it's always nice to travel and ride with them are we gonna see you at rock Hill yes year? that is the plan Okay. What um are you gonna do? Is it is it Glasgow this year? Glass, I'm saying that for right. for worlds. Yeah. UCI? Yeah. Oh. I looked at that track and that track looks like that. <laughs> I'm it pretty sure they're it's... changing it a little bit, <laughs> but it's like basically gonna be the same, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that thing looked like a monster. I looked at it yeah. and I was like, no, this is like a roller coaster. This is not yeah. fun for me at my age. Like, I didn't go. Where's the kitty side? Last year, <laughs> but I was watching and it looks pretty pretty gnarly for sure. Are you looking to are you looking to go? Yeah, this hopefully year? that's the plan. Try and make the team and see if everything works out. Okay. Are they required to change something on the track? Um before one of those races. I'm not sure if they're required to. But okay. they could just be making it less deathly. <laughs> that means before the advantage that might have rode that track before. What was that? Somebody told me that before as far as um, I know in the U.S., if, if a local track holds a national, they have to change like an obstacle. Or oh, something, yeah. You know, on that race, so the locals don't have as much of an advantage, you know. So I was just wondering if it was like that with the UCI. Mm -hmm. The bigger tracks yeah it could be i i've never heard of it but okay. it could be who knows okay. <laughs> yeah so um what is your um hot, i mean not not hobby but what is your you think some people are sneakerheads some people are into sports like the memorabilia is what's your thing outside of bmx that this is your your like i play video games 
So, like, what's your safe haven for your your sanity outside of um? Hmm, I do like video games. <laughs> Me and Mackenzie Gayhart play Fortnite a lot, so that's one. And then, ah, <laughs> uh, it's tough. I mean, I like tattoos. I don't do it all the time, but that's one. Ah, uh, ink therapy. Yes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's Fortnite is, Fortnite <laughs> is hard. I mean, and maybe because I'm older, I don't know, but I watch my son, he play and also they just be like, and all of a sudden he's building like all the way to the oh, top. Oh yeah, we. Like, how, how are you doing <laughs> that? And then they're shooting at you and then you can shoot back. I'm like, no, no. He's come on dad, I'll, I'll keep you alive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that, is, that is what we did a lot when Peyton, Ridenauer, and Tegan came to stay at my house for a week. We played a lot of Fortnite. <laughs> nice. What um what's your out of all the trophies that you've gotten over the years, what's the most one that you just you know that's the one that you're gonna keep forever? That's your your biggest trophy mm, that Probably um National Champs medal from junior. I got third. Or my world Ford trophy from Rock Hill. So you are into sweets, <laughs> like you were saying. What what's your go to? Cookie dough, dessert? for sure. <laughs> I love <laughs> cookie <laughs> dough. I don't know what it is, but yeah, that's definitely my go to. Okay. Uh Shannon? Oh no, I don't have anything else. I'm sorry. I think <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Okay, well, I was—I you know, like to ask ask a couple of random right. questions, and I and I and I and I, <laughs> and I will pull them All out right. of anywhere. I'm ready. So I got three. I think I got okay. three this time. One, I was like to ask, do you believe? In yes, hundred percent. Wow! Not even got to think about it. You see <laughs> yeah. something? No, you see? no. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I would probably okay. be terrified if I ever saw something, <laughs> but I do believe that they are real. Okay. 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 Two. Do you believe that we went to the moon? Oh, uh, see, I've I've seen so much controversy on it recently too. I think yeah, yeah. The yeah. Okay. Okay. And I'm hearing a new one right now is they believe something that's happening now are portals. Oh. You know what a portal? I a think portal so. In? I think. Get in on one side, yeah. pop out on the other. So, uh, so apparently there's this thing now where they're saying portals are, are, are they're real. Do you believe that that's something that in our lifetimes will ever I mean, to? possibly. <laughs> like, what in the world? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> possibly. Maybe if technology okay. goes up that much, but I'm going to say no for right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just doing that. <laughs> I mean, I never know. Like, cause the whole thing is, you, you know, being that we're older, so me and Shannon have seen a lot. And we used to, like, I was telling somebody at work today, I was like, you know, when we were young, we'd watch Star Trek and we see the guy tap his ear and talk to, you know, whoever. And then, like, 10, 20 years later, it's just blue right. to us, right? You just boom, and we get music out of it, you can get conversations out of it, you, can, you know, whatever. So to us, it's, it's like second nature, but back then, you're looking at Star Trek going, <laughs> Yeah, without com- without communicators, right? <laughs> right. No, no. I don't yeah. know. Portal- yep. Portals are a big thing, though. <laughs> well, possibly, who knows? Right. And, and who and who do you get the first person to walk through that? Like, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, my hands not gonna be on backwards when I come on the other side. Not me. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> not me. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I I think we got everything that we needed. Thank you for your time. I'm sorry for the delay oh, in the beginning. All good. Thank you. And um, we should probably get this. Uh, I think we're going to release awesome. it on Monday. Awesome. So I'll get back with you Monday and let you know how, how everything goes. And then um, get you to like it on your Perfect. Instagram. Because Instagram is what you're selling. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Great. Awesome. Thank you uh, of for your time. And you Thank you. Day. You guys too. Bye. All right, bye. Bye-bye.